In this video, we're going to explore how we can add a background image like this here. It could be any background image right now. I just have a sample image they use here and it could be any image. It could be on your pie chart or on your donut chart, line chart, bar chart, etc, etc. Doesn't matter at all. It's a very straightforward process and luckily Chart.js has in the documentation a sample on how to do it. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab that one and use this and apply here to create our own version. So let's begin. In this video, we're going to focus on one of the viewers question, which is how to add a background image to Chart.js. So first of all, I want to show you where this question came from. It came from one of the viewers here who watched one of my other videos, which was how to add text and value at the center of a donut chart in Chart.js. And of course, most logical is maybe sometimes you might have want to have a background on here as well. So if you scroll down here, you can see here the viewer, Tiaga Rajan. And I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing your name correctly, so sorry about that if that's not correct. But Tiaga Rajan asked the following, how to add chart background image, sir. All right, so let's start and explore how to do this. To do this, we need to create our chart, but we're not going to use a default chart this time. What we're going to do is we're going to explore the Chart.js documentation because it covers a certain part of it. And afterwards, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, dissect that par part by part to get a better understanding. All right. So first of all, let's go here and we go here on, if I'm not mistaken, it's the configurations, or the configuration. And we scroll down here. You can see here canvas background. Click on that. And the moment we click on that, you can see here there's two options here. This is the one with the background color, but we want a background image. So if we click here, oh, if you click here on image, it will jump to a new structure here with an image in the center. So I have an image here, which is a very basic image here. I didn't spend much time on it. My only goal was to have an image. So you can see how we can get it here in the canvas, basically. All right, so to do this, I want to grab this code here. So if you see here, you can find all the structures here. And probably you can just copy this code. So let's do this first. So I'm going to copy this code and I'm going to put in here a script and within here we're going to make the blocks so I've repeated the how to do the blocks and why it is so important many times so I will go very fast through this if you want to know the blocks and understand how it works really in depth I have in the description I have set now links with resources where you can view my other videos covering that specific aspect the reason I'm doing that is to speed up the video so it will not take too much time especially for others who already know certain parts. So if you don't know that, you can go to that part of that video as well, if necessary. All right. So here, and I will put in here, con uh, the, this is basically the config. All right, as you can see, this is the config block. So the next one here, of course, what we need is another one, which is our setup block. So I'm going to check here what will be the next one. You can see it's here in alphabetic order. So we need a setup, which is this one here. Perfect. I will copy this, paste this in here proper indentations as well and then the next one here is the plugin block so I'm going to copy all of the plugin block or everything from the plugin copy this put it here between I'm putting this between here because this one is dependent or the config will need to load this first so this one is dependent or the config is dependent on this part here all right so here this will be our plugin block I'm going to remove this, you just ignore this here. This is basically more for the instructions itself, not important for us. So you already can figure out here, we have certain things here, how you can change the image here. All right, but if we save this, of course, let's go refresh, nothing happens. We're missing stuff. Do you know what it is? Well, I'm sure you know. If you have seen my other videos, already you know the structure we are missing here, the render slash init block. So I'm going to do this one as well. In here, cons. And the cons will be my chart. I'll just give it my chart because that will be the canvas. However, as you can see here, we didn't specify any canvas yet. So we're going to do that as well. So I say here new to create the constructor chart parentheses. Remember the parentheses here. And then here document.get element by ID. And here we say my chart. Again, if you want to know how and why I'm doing all this stuff. Check the description video for the resources that I refer to. And then config. Save that. Once we save this, what we need to do here is we need to create our 
chart. So what we could do is it very quickly. I'm just going to make a div class. I'm going to give this a class of this one. I already have the style tag here ready. And there we are. All right. And then finally here, canvas. Oh, ID equal my chart. That's the chart name. There we are. So once I save this here, we're not done yet. Why the JavaScript library is missing. So we go here to getting started configuration, copy this, paste this in here. Remove the white space, save this. Now we have a working model. Beautiful. So now we have a working model here. And what's quite nice is that they put it even in the center here. So for anyone who would like to learn that, that's also a very useful skill at the same time. So you can see here, this is the plugin that we're working on. And you can see this already here. I will one time make a specific video to break down this. And I have it in the other videos as well, but I will repeat this for here. Because here, this here could be fine to in a more better way. This is what we call a object, uh, this or destructuring objects or object destructuring. What we're going to do is we're going to grab the object or create the object. We destructure it by breaking it down, but at the same time connecting it all together. Meaning here, because basically here these are just objects referring to this here, and this is already here all together. So what we could do here is the following. I'll just say a constant, and this constant. The braces, so we can remove this as well. Eventually, we say CTX, which is of course the chart part, as you can see here, it's referring to this. Then we say the following here this we say get the chart area. So, as you can see, your charts dot this. So, this is just this, and then what we have here is the column, and then here we grab this. So, basically, here we have objects. This is the first object, and then we have the second object, and this object has, of course. All of these positioning here top left width and height we could even do here just for sake of uh, extras we can say here bottom comma right comma so we have every one so basically every position top left bottom right and we have also the width and height of the chart or basically here why is this important let's open up the canvas here so i want to make sure you know this you can see your canvas is 400 by 400. However, the center here is not 400 by 400. Why? Because let's be honest, there is still some space here. This space here needs to be calculated because we want to know the chart area. So the chart area top will tell us what is the official starting point. You will say zero, no. Zero is the official starting point of the canvas ID, but not the chart area. The chart area here between is probably maybe 10 or 20 pixels difference. How do I say so? Let's try and explore. All right. So what we can do here is console log. We're going to just display this, and then we say top. Let's get the top here. And the top is basically the chart area top, the starting point of the chart area. And before we are even completing here, sorry, this makes you make sure you do this one equal chart semicolon. Yes. So this here is all equal chart. That's why you have the chart here and chart here. Let's remove this. Now, if I save this, we should have nice working. And you can see here, the exact amount of pixels is 20, 32 before it starts. So you can see here, if this would be 400 in height, you would say 200 would be the center. That is not correct because it should be minus 32. 32, or I'm sorry, this here is minus 32. And then we have to divide that by 2, whatever is in here, plus the 32 here up. So, meaning this. So if you have the height, and you can see here as well what it really does. It calculates top plus height divided by 2. And here it does the same thing as well. Left plus width divided by 2 minus image width divided by 2. So what it really does here is, oh wait, sorry, this is the calculation here. Uh, am I correct? That's the image. All right. Why don't we just start to show this because I think that would be probably more better because this is the only struggling here. The reason why is this the canvas, the way you calculate is very different. It's basically the opposite of what you're used to because normally in a chart you say you count from down, but well you count here from up and you have to calculate the differences here. So we have here the top and let's see here what would be the exact center here. We can calculate that. It's very straightforward. That's the top. Then we have the console log. Then we say here height, 
and the height is the height of the chart area, meaning that the height here is shorter than 400. We can check this to confirm. And then what we can do here is 400 minus top. And the height should be equal to this, exactly the same. So if I save this now and refresh, you can see we get the same numbers. All right. So how do you get the center? How do you figure out in the image the center then is basically this here. So basically what it does here is the, all right, uh, this makes us a lot of sense because it grabs the image width. It needs to calculate the width of the image and then it divides by two to get the exact center. All right. So what we did here is first, we're going to get the height. So that's basically 400 minus 32. Then we equals 368, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, that's correct. So that's this. That would be the exact center of the uh, item. Or sorry, that's the difference here. And then if you want to get the center here is the height divided by 2. And then plus 32. That's what we need to do here. That will be your exact center here. That's for to, to position it. So we can say here 400. Oh no, 3, 6, 8. Remember, that's the 1. Divide by 2. And then plus the top. That's basically what happens here. Height divided by 2 plus top equals a certain value. Let's see. 216. That's to be exact. So this here is basically 216. Oh, sorry. The Y here. 216. Save that. Refresh. You can see here nothing changes here. All right. So this is one of the parts. And then you have the image height. So the image height is they grab the image and then divide it by two to figure out the exact center. Because if you won't do this, look what will happen. We'll grab the image height and then it just goes up here because it doesn't calculate the image height because it will start from down and push it up. So here you need to divide it by two. We can even check what's the image height. And grab this. Console.log. Then we have the image height here. Let's calculate that. What's the image height? The image height is, if I'm not mistaken, 192. All right. So if we do this, divide by two, Let's see what we get. We get 96. So if you have 96, if we change whatever we have here, the image height to 96, we should have the reposition in the center. All right. So that's basically how this works. So this is we're going to positioning. I have another video that covers that as well. That's we're going to the uh, putting the text in the center. But how do we change then here? Well, basically the image that you want to change here. Let's grab the image that I have. So right now I'm working from the desktop, but you can get any image online, of course, that you want. And I'm, but I don't do that because I, I prefer to have my own image, and that was so I won't have any trouble if ever the image is, is copyrighted. So what I'm doing here is basically this here. I'm going to grab it, make my own image, paste in here. So if you have it from your own database or you have it from somewhere else, you can basically return the value in here. So if I save this now, go back here, refresh, you can see here now we have something. Of course, with the image height. We're doing something here. We can basically remove all of this or put this on default value. Put it on zero, zero. Let's save that. You can see here now what happens. It starts at the very corner here. If you look at our image, it starts here. And then it gets yellow. And there you are. That's it. So we could change this as well. We can change it to any position as well. Put it in the center or put it in any position. Just play around with this. If you have a line chart, the situation works almost similar because then the height and the width will be calculated automatically based on the size of a line chart, size of the bar chart, which is usually a rectangle. But this is basically how you have to do it. All you have to figure out here is to put an image here. And this could be even adjusted more if you would like to adjust that. You could do, for example, a shorthand code here. However, that's a it's not necessary for now. However, you could do a shorthand code and put it in here with an image. But most important part here is basically this. This is your JavaScript. Where we get the image, we create first a new image constructor. And here we grab the image. And then here we start to work with the plugin. Why? It's because the constant image will be inserted in here. And say so here, if image is complete, grabs the stuff here. If there's any image, it shows all this. 
So this is basically how to do it. It's very straightforward. It's not that complicated. Once you have this in place and you have the understanding of this part here, this is the most important one for almost everything related to Canvas. So, but if you do have any questions regarding to this still or something else, put them in the comment section below. Thank you for watching this video and I hope you enjoy it. And if you enjoy this video, you probably will enjoy this one as well. And if you're interested in Chart.js, check out in the description box the link directing to my Chart.js course where you can learn everything about Chart.js. And finally, of course, make sure you subscribe to my channel.